Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Programming and Access 2013. My name is Steve Bishop, and today we're going to be continuing our series on VBA, or Visual Basic for Applications. And we're going to be talking today about class constructors and destructors. Now, a class constructor is called automatically when the object is instantiated. Okay, so this is going to be a method on your class object that will be called automatically when you are using that special keyword of new. And I don't know if you recall this, but when we were using our class and we were and we were creating it, we had to use that new keyword in order to instantiate our object. We'll see that in action here a little bit later and find out why that's so important to us here. Now, a class destructor is called when the object is destroyed. So it's kind of the opposite of a constructor. It's called at the end of when the, when the class exists. Once the class is being closed down, we're shutting it down and destroying it, then the class destructor is called. So class constructor, you can use it to set initial property values on your class object. And this is very, very handy. Sometimes you want to set default values for your class object before you allow somebody to go ahead and proceed and change those values. The other thing you can do is call other methods on the object. So you can call, maybe you have a series of different methods that exist on your class object, and maybe you want to call them all, or maybe you want to call some of them um, when the class is initially, you know, when the class is initially instantiated. Unfortunately, unlike other object-oriented programming languages, you cannot pass parameter you cannot use parameters in your class constructor. And this is really a major, major downfall, I think, for VBA. And I'm really surprised that Microsoft has not addressed this. In all other object-oriented programming languages that, that come to my mind, you can pass in a parameter, you can pass an argument to your class constructor so that you can maybe set those default values to a particular value or, uh, you know, give certain characteristics to your, to your class object when you initially create it. And that causes a lot less typing to be involved when you create your objects. But in VBA, unfortunately, if you come from one of those other object-oriented programming backgrounds, you cannot use parameters in your constructor. Now, there are ways to get around this. Um, some of you may already have, thought, have already come to the same one that, that we're going to use here. Uh, but it is just a, something to keep in mind. You cannot pass a parameter to your class constructor. Now, your class constructor is going to be a method on your class object that just looks like this. It has this syntax, private subclass initialize. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. It looks like just any other method, but it will be called automatically when your object is instantiated. Now, your class destructor is primarily for garbage collection. And garbage collection is a term that we use in programming to talk about getting rid of objects that are still existing in memory that we don't need anymore, okay? They're, they're garbage. We don't, if we just, if we leave them abandoned, they're going to reside in our memory until either the access runtime um, is able to go through and recognize that that, that that object is no longer being used. Uh, or sometimes it goes on into, you know, it stays stuck in your memory all the way until you close out of the application entirely. And so you can, ch you know, you can eat up a chunk of your memory and slow down your application if you don't do proper garbage collection. So then there are changes values elsewhere in the program that you can make so that you could say, for example, keep a counter of how many times an object is created or destroyed. Um, and that can become handy for certain circumstances that I'm sure you could probably come up with on your own. The other thing that it can do is, uh, this is one particular instance I've used it, is that when I destroy a particular object in memory, I may set a, uh, the enabled or disabled property on a form so that when an object no longer is available, maybe I want to disable parts of the form so that somebody doesn't have the ability to try to set uh, values on the form, if the object that those values would go into, uh, if that object is destroyed, it would cause an error. So it's really handy sometimes to be able to, to on your destructor, go in and say, okay, um, you know, this, this value needs to be disabled or hidden or whatever. Once again, with the class destructor, you cannot use parameters just like with the constructor. However, this is not nearly as big of an issue because honestly, you could just store that as a private value inside of your class and then use that private value inside of your destructor. So 
not being able to pass parameters is not that big of an issue, but it is something to be aware of when you are creating your destructor. The syntax for a destructor is private sub class underscore terminate. So uh, just so that you can see what that looks like, private sub class underscore terminate is going to automatically be called, if it exists on your class object, this will be called when your class is destroyed. Okay. Now you don't need to have the class constructor or destructor. They are completely optional. You can or cannot have them if you don't want them. And uh, let's go ahead and get started and see what these things can do and why they would be useful. So in my, um, in my access database here, I'm going to go to my class contact here. And this value, p underscore id, is being set to 1. This, you know, this private uh, variable is being set to 1 every single time the id variable, the id value or property, is being looked at from elsewhere. And that's very inconvenient because if somebody, if, if there's some reason why that ID value would get changed, well, every time somebody goes to look for it, we're changing it back to one, okay? Um, that's really not an ideal functionality. Instead, what we probably want to do is we want to set this as the default value and then allow people to change it a little bit later. So let's go ahead and do this. Let me delete this out now. And then I'm going to go ahead and create my private subclass initialize and then we're going to go ahead and set that PID value to 0. I'm going to set it to 0 because 0 is kind of a universal language that says hey this is new okay there isn't an ID that exists for this yet it's just a, the default value of 0. Now there is something that you need to be aware of, and I probably should have covered this in a previous video when I was talking about the get and lets, but I'm going to go ahead and cover it now. If I set my public property get id, or excuse me, let id, and I'm going to say value as integer, the reason why this is so important to have this functionality, have this ability to um, manage whether or not your values are getting set is because say for example that somebody wanted to pass in a value here that I didn't want them to to, to pass in so for example um, I don't want somebody to be able to pass in the value of zero so what we can do is if value is greater than zero then let's go ahead and set the p underscore id value equal to the value that somebody passed in. So this is validating, okay? This is a form of validation that the value somebody is going to set my id property to must be greater than zero. So that means they can't set it to zero, they can't set it to negative one, they can't set it to anything less than zero. But notice that I'm setting my initial value to zero. Well, that kind of makes sense because it, by default I'm setting it to zero, and there really isn't any reason why if somebody were to pass in the value of zero that I would want them to be changing it. Why would they change it? Why would we need to allow them to change it to zero? It should by default be zero. Okay, so if somebody's going to set the ID property, it needs to be one or higher. All right, so there's my class initialize. I'm going to use the ID. Now, one other thing I want to talk about here before we move on any further is I could use id equals to equals zero here. And by doing it this particular way, by, by using the name of my let property, what I'm doing is I'm forcing this to be triggered. So if I actually tried to set id equal to zero, it will go up here to the property let id and do the validation to see if I can in fact set the value uh, of my private variable. And that's very handy. Sometimes you want to be triggering certain events to happen that you may have uh, inside of your method, uh, inside of your let. Okay, you may want to trigger some of those things. So, you could certainly do ID. I do want to caution you against doing it that particular way. You should always use the me dot syntax if you are planning on specifically talking to one of these 
private uh, one of these properties here okay if you're trying to do a let or a get you want to be using the me keyword and this is going to be pretty obvious if I do something like this let's do a public um, sub called init and we're going to allow somebody to pass a parameter to this init method and we're going to say it's called ID as integer okay now if that's the case and I try to set ID equal to zero or I try to set uh, you know ID equal to ID that's a little confusing to access that would be obviously very weird it wouldn't really know how to sort that out but if I did a me dot and then did ID you can see now it makes a little bit more sense I can have this ID variable declared as a parameter and still use it properly as long as I have this me.id keyword that will still basically tell the um, you know the the method that this is in fact what I'm setting when I'm using this me.id all right I hope that makes sense to you it's just a good idea good rule of thumb that if you're going to talk to any of these public um, lets or gets that you use the me keyword all right but in this particular case since I'm gonna set the value to zero I don't want it to go through my let validation here okay because obviously if I'm trying to set it to zero it's gonna it's it's gonna fail so let's go ahead and create my class initialize I'm gonna go ahead and set a breakpoint there so we can see when that event is triggered I'm gonna go to my form here and I'm gonna go ahead and dim my new contact as CLS contact okay and then I'm gonna go ahead and set my new contact equal to new CLS oops CLS contact now remember the crucial thing to understand is that your class will be initialized when this new keyword is used so if I use it up here as new at this particular point then when the class is dimmed that new keyword would trigger my class initialize method but since I'm using it in this set it will be used when I do this new class contact okay so just remember that wherever you see the new keyword is when the class initializer or class constructor will be triggered so let's go ahead and save that and let's go ahead and run this all right so you can see my my uh, code kind of just skipped over the dim and it'll do that when you're debugging it won't it, it'll skip over all your dim statements but now I've got this new object in memory called new contact as class contact but it has not been notice that it, it didn't go through and do my class initialize did it okay that has not been triggered yet but now when I go to go back to my form here okay now when I do this you can see now since I use the new keyword my class initialize is being run we're setting the private variable to zero and we're done okay and now if I want to I could do it um, just take a look at new contact ID and the value is zero all right so that is a class constructor what about a class destructor okay what, what would that be useful for well let me go ahead and I'm gonna create a new module here and this is a very very common practice at least amongst um, the coding that I have done and, and other coders that I've worked with is to create a new module and this module is just simply going to be called globals okay and this is kind of a, a module that is used to declare certain variables that you want to make sure are available G enabled as boolean okay so I'm going to create a global variable called G underscore enabled as a boolean and it is part of the globals module okay so what I'm gonna do is in my contact I'm going to in my class contact I'm going to set a private sub class terminate and I'm going to set that globals dot G enabled equal to false so every time that this class is terminated every time it is destroyed I'm going to go into that G enabled 
value up here in the globals, and I'm going to set it to false. And then other parts of my application can look to this global variable and determine whether or not, uh, you know, maybe certain functionality on that form should be allowed. So let's go back into my contact here. And I'm going to set a breakpoint on the class terminate. I'm going to save my class just to make sure that it's good. And now I'm going to set new contact equal to nothing. And what setting your new contact value, setting, uh, you know, basically setting a, an object equal to nothing destroys the object. So we still have a variable that exists in here, but we are destroying it and we're, we're basically doing all of that garbage collection as well as we're also going to be able to set the, that global variable that we were talking about. So let's go ahead and see this in action. Go into design view real quick. Let's trigger this here. So there's our class initialize. Now we're going to set new contact equal to nothing and that causes the class terminate method to be run that sets globals.g enabled equal to false. And now if I take a look and see what the value of my globals.g enabled is, we can see that it is false because my class object changed its value to false. Okay, so that is class constructors and class destructors. I hope that's valuable information to you. Uh, and as always, please feel free to like and subscribe to my channel and let other people know about my channel. Um, and I hope to see you on the next video.